My name is Cyprian Dakoto, and I'm from Trinidad and Tobago, the home of Carnival. My aim over the next few days is to find out what the Notting Hill Carnival means in the 21st century. I'll be talking to the people that make it happen, and hopefully they'll be able to give me an insight into what significance Carnival actually has for those attending and participating. I know that Carnival is an important part of life in Trinidad and Tobago, but does the heritage of the first Carnival back in the 1950s still hold sway over the Carnival that we see in present-day Notting Hill? What do these roots mean? Does this heritage matter? Trinidad and Tobago Carnival has its ancestry in many religious rituals and socio-political observances. Do these influence a multicultural London Carnival today? Or is it just an excuse for a great street party? I haven't been to Notting Hill Carnival for over 10 years. I'm excited to be back to see the changes. Notting Hill Carnival has its roots in Trinidad and Tobago, where I'm from. I wonder how many people know of this, and does it really matter? Notting Hill is home to over 150 different communities. Are they part of Notting Hill Carnival? Are we, as a Caribbean community, making them feel welcomed? What can we do to improve the diversity of influences that make Carnival so special. Now, Carnival in Trinidad and Tobago is a pre-Lenten festivity. Are rituals important to Notting Hill Carnival in the 21st century? And I'm hoping to find out the future of Notting Hill Carnival. Will it go its own way regardless of its heritage? The London Notting Hill we see today is of course incredibly gentrified. The houses are grand and the lifestyle to maintain these grand houses even grander. London circa 1957 was completely different to the Notting Hill we know of today. At the time it was filled with arrivals of the Empire Windrush and so many immigrants who were here to help rebuild a bombed out London. Of course after a while they started to miss home. So what do you do when you miss home? You get some friends together and decide let's have a little carnival. Before things got too hectic I went to see my old friend Sam Johnson at All Saints Church in the heart of Notting Hill. Sam was part of the original celebrations back in the 50s and I'm sure he has witnessed a few changes over the years. He is 86 after all. Um, I was born in 20th of June 1926. Bloody hell. <laughs> there you are. Yeah. So, Carnival I've seen I left Trinidad when I was 28, so yeah. I've lived here ever since. Yeah. I told you I came here in 1954. Oh, right, here. exactly. Uh, people just thought we will get together on an August bank holiday, knock the drums, and uh, much to the annoyance of the people around, and we had a band of uh, probably... So um, you were in one of those first bands? Uh, <laughs> I so was. we're talking to a legend. Have you got a blue plaque as yet? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to work on that. So go on. So tell me about the first carnival. So it was the walking, expats. Just walking the street. It started right out here. Yes. Um, we had the priest, the Roman Catholic priest, Father Michael Collins, or Hollins. Mm. And he came and blessed the people and asked them to have a good healthy time. carnival. Yeah. And we walked around, the street, just walked around. So at the that time, was it just West Indians? Yes. It was only yes. West Indians, okay, a few, cool. A few of the local uh, people who were here. Community, yes. Um, English, there yes. were, who joined in at the back. But right. um, it started really with basically West Indian. Hmm. So because you all were missing home at the time. Of Kitchener course. came off of the course. wind rush. Yeah. <laughs> London, course. London is the place yeah, for that's me. Right, that's right. That yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. Missing home, so it started of that. Yeah. But it gave a flavour of the West Indies. That's what it did, and it brought 
West Indians who lived around the area together and it was one way of accumulating people, even if it is once a year yes. and that's how it all started. It was great to chat to the legend that is Sam Johnson and his memories on the early days of the Notting Hill Carnival and how it grew out of the spirit of London's immigrants from Trinidad and Tobago. Next, I was off to crash a party at the Tricycle Theatre in Kilburn, which was hosting a celebration of 50 years of independence for Trinidad and Tobago. I managed to find a comfy sofa away from all the action where I could talk to a few of Trinidad and Tobago's finest. Uh, well, I think that one of the things about the Trinidad Carnival is that it's holiness, if you want. Uh, there is least crime that day. <laughs> there is least interfering with people. Medicine, yes. It is more respecting and delighting in each other. And we kind of look and say, okay, it celebrates abandon and so on, but it celebrates more than abandon. It celebrates a certain quality of being human, it celebrates youth, it celebrates beauty, it celebrates a whole other stuff. Also, in terms of the pretty mass, I like to think of people as trying to present the best self, so that on Carnival Day, people come out dressed in the best costume, mm -hmm. with the best behavior. Mm -hmm. People go out with baskets of food, the children and the mothers and so on, Picnics. find their picnic spaces. And there's a certain kind of um, respect for each other, even within that situation where you can be very close to each other. Um, I think in Carnival, the fact that people together can share a space suggests also that people can share the space, the larger country, if you want. Yes. And I think that that is perhaps being played out in terms of the Carnival here. For me, Earl Lovelace really summed up the spirit of Trinidad and Tobago Carnival, talking of the presentation of our best self and a coming together of humanity. But before I got too caught up with Trinidad and Tobago Carnival, Felix Cross helped me to understand the differences between the two. For me, the thing is, as you say, Carnival, they want to be when you When you're in Trinidad and you wake up, on carnival morning, you know what you have to do. Absolutely. It's like it's like when you wake up on Christmas morning, yes. you know what you have to do. When people come to Notting Hill, they don't know what they have they to do. Have to. They know there's a big thing going on, okay. but it's not it's not etched into the DNA of their cultural psyche. No. You have a period ahead of you. Mm -hmm where you're going to eat, for example, no meat. Yes. You're going to drink no alcohol. Yes. You're going to observe all the pre-Lenten uh, observations that you must do. Yes. Getting ready for Easter. So you have one last splash. In Trinidad, they go crazy. In England, they toss pancakes. Yes. There's really on a plate the difference between yeah. Europe and... and, yeah. uh, and us. Trinidadians met Jamaicans and St. Lucians and St. Yeah. Gideons and Antigans in England. In England, yes. They didn't meet them in Trinidad. No. You know, now with planes and everything, of course, yes. but we're talking about the 50s and 60s. So that, through osmosis, that, that notion, the sense of being West Indian and so on, in, in real terms, I mean, yes, okay, there was the failed federation and things, but yes. the sense of being, that happens here. Yes. And, uh, and that's a remarkable thing. So that began to happen in, in the bars in Notting Hill and, you know, bars in West London and clubs and things. That's fantastic. Yeah. You know, people had that sort of strength. When you're when you're catching hell because of the racism in the sixties and fifties yes. here, it, having that, that, that sense of, of, of brotherhood and sisterhood and everything else, uh, of, 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 of uh, some sort of Caribbean meaning was meant a lot to me. very, very strong. Soini Gray was the press officer for the Trinidad and Tobago High Commission. She attended her first Notting Hill Carnival last year and I was eager to hear what she made of it. Um, it was carnival, so I kind of, I just really thought it was, uh, I expected it to be an authentic or a semi-authentic representation of Trinidad. I expected to see more of Trinidad in Notting Hill Carnival. Um, How could you expect to see more of Trinidad when in Trinidad? Be because it, the information that I had 
what I was told is that it's derived from, it, it evolved from. So I, I did kind of expect to see that still. That, but you see, when I look at other countries, when they have their cultural things, it's pretty authentic to them. Like, I know pizza in many respects mm. is not authentically Italian, Italian but it does retain much of its Italianness, even in some of the more v- vulgar <laughs> versions of, of pizza so you don't think Trinidad has maintained or are you not I am concerned that it hasn't I've con- I'm concerned that we are losing if we have not lost our intellectual right to Notting Hill Carnival I mean, in the Caribbean, I guess because we have shared, such shared histories, it's much easier for them to keep it kind of authentic and retain much of its Trinidadian-ness. Okay. I, I think, though, we haven't done that here. Mm-hmm. And when I look at other cultures here in London, yes. they've been able to do that. So I think we should have been able, or we should be able to do that. So Ini made an interesting argument for the reclamation of the Notting Hill Carnival. And Tiller gave me even more food for thought. Carnival was always about that. It was always a contestation between two groups, the, the, the upper classes and the lower classes, or the Jamets, who always um, challenged the status quo, always challenged their economic circumstances and their, their, their um, social circumstances, and play the kind of mass that that would make those statements. So, yes. for example, Baby Doll Mass Absolutely. was a statement about the sexual abuse of... Um, of, of, of women from yes. those working class communities Absolutely. and the fact that they were being left with these, these half white children to mine <laughs> and they had no money to do it so they developed this mask where they would go out into the street masked and attack white, white men, men and ask them for money for their child <laughs> it was a serious but this was a serious statement of what was going on yes. in the society and I mean you know if you look at a lot of the other um masquerades they all had a social yes. or political significance Absolutely. and so i think that i think that we've we've kind of lost our way with that you know mm. um the ritual is important but more important than the ritual is acknowledgement of the fact that there is a ritual an understanding of the fact that there is a ritual so whether i mean it's it's entirely somebody's choice if they want to observe the ritual or not, and some people will, and some people will say, "Nah, I, I ain't doing that to me, to me, right? I I I want to drink no punching and and offer nothing to nobody, ancestors and thing that that didn't have nothing to do with me, yeah. right? But what I'm saying is is that just a recognition of the fact that it exists is important yes. and it's crucial to the thing surviving in some sort of some sort of valid Context. and valuable. Yeah. yeah. Let's 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 just be real about it. Carnival in its in, in its Trinidad context and what has been now been replicated in a hundred and something places around the world Fine. is really that festival that celebrates African people specifically in Trinidad who were saying to the society You all want us to be invisible but we are not invisible. Look me look me and you have to deal with me you have to deal with me and so if you have this 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 festival which then becomes not look me but <laughs> can i come out can for a i while? come out for a while please <laughs> yes. no it can't work like that it can't work like that and i would like to see i would like to see a, a reclaiming of 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 the not rituals to, of, of, the but, but also to of just the thing itself I came away from the tricycle theatre with a lot to think about. According to the Trinidadians I had spoken to, it seemed that the Notting Hill Carnival had lost its grip on the past. There was a call to reclaim its heritage, but was that possible? And was it necessary? I wasn't wholly sure. I still had one more stop to make. Carnival wouldn't be complete without music, so I met with Anthony Joseph a musician and poet, with his roots in Trinidad and Tobago, but very much a London musician working today. Things are changing, people are knowing, people know about Trinidad a lot more now. Yes. Whereas, you know, 10 years ago, I'd say, I'm from Trinidad. I'd say, what part of Jamaica is that? (laughs) 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 I was like, no, you know, now you say Trinidad. Oh, it's all Trinidad and Tobago. All right, cool. So it's, it's changing. Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is, when I first came, 
in 89 and started going to carnivals then there mm. was a lot more calypso there were people yes, same you here. know people from trinidad used to come down and there was a lot of people on the road you'd meet people friends and it'd be nice it'd be a nice atmosphere and then it started gradually changing and we find a lot of sound systems a lot of dancehall music a lot of reggae a lot of latin stuff which is fine yes. but that's when i kind of stopped going because i thought you know, I could hear this music anywhere. Yes. I want to hear some soca, what I do. I don't get to hear very much. I want to hear that, you know. Mm. And then this last year, I went back um, and there was a lot of soca on the streets. And it was a great atmosphere and I really enjoyed it. It was like being back home. It, it was in a, up to a point, of course. But it was, I was impressed. It was very good. Like the first few years I was going to Notting Hill, I was very nostalgic and I saw the carnival as a way of reconnecting to Trinidad, to the root in Trinidad, because I knew where it came from. I knew that Trinidadians had started it. Mm -hmm. So I associated with, I associated Notting Hill with carnival, with the Caribbean, with Trinidad, with a Trinidadian vibe. And that was there at the beginning and then it kind of moved out. Um, but I agree that now, you know, in the world that we live in now, of course, you have to include everyone. And I, I think Carnival doesn't belong to Trinidad, you know. Um, carnival is a pretty international phenomenon. All different cultures of the world have some form of Carnival. I think it's a, it's a history of, of inclusion. I think it's a history of, of, widening, of a widening out and a, a history of, of connection between people. You know, I think I think it reflects the world. Yeah. It reflects the the way communication has gone. You know, yeah. the way people can communicate, the way people have access to each other now, and do, compared to the way we had access to each other in the seventies, it's yeah. different. And I think the music reflects that. And I think the legacy of the of the carnival is going to reflect that change. It's a it's a legacy of connection and interconnection between people. Yeah. Whereas I guess in the seventies, it was carnival was still seen as a black a black phenomenon, yeah. a black festival. Yeah. Um, a festival where you know a lot of West Indians would come out. Very few you know um, white British people. Or yeah. If you lived in the area, maybe, but you wouldn't travel from Poland to come for the Notting Hill Carnival. Yeah. Now people are doing, doing that. Doing that. That's yeah. precisely what I'm thinking. So it's I think it's good in that sense that. It's, it's breaking down the barriers of race and culture. And it's, in, it's an inclusive thing. Only one more day till Notting Hill Carnival. Anthony spoke of the legacy of connection and the inclusive nature of Carnival. Fred Taruka, the mestre at the London School of Samba, expanded on the notion of Carnival's inclusivity and the increasing international flavour of the Notting Hill Carnival. Then in 1999, I did my first parade with the London School of Samba. That was amazing, properly that off the scale. Your You're like, what's singing. going on? Yeah. Seeing the parade is fantastic, but being in it, part is, of it, that's the thing. It changes it totally. You see people behind you and in front of you, and you say hello, and you do your thing that to the best of your ability. You get judged. There's yes. a whole category for doing this, and, yes. and just the rush you get. People are like. Yeah, yes, yes so I'm the master of the battery. Master, what does that mean? It means that I am in charge of the drummers. I do kind of like a musical director. So I say to the drummers, I make the arrangement for a song that's been chosen every year, and then I get them to play in a way that I deem it fit for yes. a better, lack of a better explanation. Absolutely. So, yeah, we keep a little bit of London. Well, it's quite a bit of London. Quite a bit of London. But we keep it so still quite in the mould of oh, their schools. Yes. We have a queen, we have a person that bears the flag, we have all the right elements, yes. we still give a music, but then we put a little soca beat into it. Exactly. That's what we do, we keep it London, but we give it a good the Brazilian authentic. <laughs> it's definitely about social commentary. Uh, the, the idea that you see, the little glimpses you see on television will be, as you said, beads and boobs. But the actual what happens, the, the kind of work, the hard work that goes on, the thoughts behind the actual story of what each school or each block is trying to portray yes. about its country, whether it's being proud of its origins, like they might be celebrating Africa or, or Amazonians or something that's very dear to them, or maybe saying something like uh, there's a problem with poverty or crime and they'll put a little something in their, in their story which they parade through kind of. I think there are already a lot of cultures mixed into one pot. There could be more, but I think the problem is maybe demand outweighs supply. So it could be a case that they only have X amount of groups on the road, so one group has to physically drop out for another group to replace oh, really? it. So with that, it's a case, so we always go out at Notting Hill because we don't want to lose. Well, tell me, what do you bring, London School of Samba brings to Notting Hill Carnival? I think that we bring a whole lot of 
obviously. The obvious ones, colour, energy, excitement, boobs fun, and beads and boobs, <laughs> be yeah. stongs, you name it, we yes, got it. Yes, absolutely. Uh, just a big energy. We're a big family, really. We've got people that come and visit us every year, have been doing so for the last almost oh 30 years now, coming to Notting Hill for the last 26. Yeah. It's like... You know, we just say, we come out, we do our thing, everybody get involved, you're more than welcome, it's yeah. open to anybody, you could be doing this next year. I bumped into June. She had her own unique take on the function of carnival and of the importance of blending cultural experiences. What are your impressions of Notting Hill Carnival? Letting go, people together, having fun, being hedonistic, yeah. but being aware of everybody else. And that's really nice that you can just let your hair down. You, if, you, if you're actually used to being the Queen of England, yes. let's say, yeah. then you, never you do. could be, you know... A masquerader. Something like that. Like, absolutely. You, you can play. Yeah. You can absolutely play. So I think adults can get to play. Mm. And I think it's a big Well, release. it's the transformative notion of carnival. That's what it does. Well, Samba came along a bit later in the carnival. Gladly. We are glad, anyway, yes, this local absolutely. people that uh, the Caribbean people well, started a it. Yes, yes, we do um, And without it, my God, wouldn't it be grey? Mm. Wouldn't it be colourless It doesn't have that here? percussive, yes, yeah, that, yeah, those yeah. percussive Anyway, beats. I suppose in the last few years there's been more Latino bands that have joined in. Good. And uh, so now I think if London can have this fun together and I mean a lot of people I know on the perimeter they say carnival isn't it like dodgy. a bit dodgy I've never found it dodgy <laughs> I want to be in the middle of you it you want to be in the middle of the road and I love it it's, it's that's where to be yes, in carnival that's you're going to be thing. in carnival, carnival enter, enter, it. It. enter it that's enter right it. I love it that's right I thank it. you <laughs> <laughs> thank you honey <laughs> Rio Carnival is vastly different from Trinidad and Tobago's. Rio's is synonymous with boobs and beads, while Trinidad and Tobago's struggles to maintain a socio-political dimension. I decided to pop into the Tabernacle, an iconic building in Powys Square, which had a small costume exhibition on display. The Tabernacle was built in the 1880s. Originally an evangelical church, it became a focal point for the increasing West Indian community during the 1950s and 60s. It has been strongly identified with the Notting Hill Carnival ever since. Here we are in the Tabernacle and we're so fortunate we've got like an exhibition of uh, costumes. I think the Tabernacle plays home host to Mangrove Mars Camp. Uh, we're talking about throughout the experience of the feathers, the boobs and the beads, and we've got a classic representation of it here. Should it happen? Should it not happen? Uh, where are its artistic merits? Are these clothes made to fit someone or is it a one size fit all? Uh, you know, we don't know. It, 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 it's the question we're trying to get to the heart of but however each person and so should be the case has a different interpretation on these things but um you know who's to say it looks amazing can you imagine what it would look like when you see these people jumping up and en masse you know you see 45 people wearing this costume 60 in the other it it, it, it has its resonance and it, it it we understand the notion of masquerade because you have the opportunity to become someone else. You're no longer just a participant, no, no, just a citizen. For the day that you wear a costume, you enter Commedia dell'arte, whether, or, 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 or you become somebody, you transform. It's the transformative power of the masquerade. After a quick costume change myself, I was ready for my next meeting of the day. And after seeing the costumes at the Tabernacle, it inspired me to visit Shirley and Gloria at Flamboyan, a company co-founded by the legendary London costume designer, the late Larry Ford. Well, my role is dressing them mm -hmm. and giving them the, the tools to become the other person mm -hmm. or that alternate, alternate character. Ego. Yes. So when, you, and, and it, I see it happen so many times, you take this, Silly little mask. And you put it on on somebody, and you would not believe the transformation it makes. Yes. They change yeah. this simple thing. Mm. 
people come in and they know nothing about it and they find themselves in it. I yeah. had a German girl that a friend invited this year. She never was in Carnival, but she put on something from here and she was on the road and <laughs> pulling rope. <road. laughs> Absolutely. And when I saw her at the end of the day, oh God, really, it was so good. I look at me and, and you know, she hung on the rope and yes. it was like heaven and I'm back next year <laughs> and I'll bring this one and I'll bring that one. So Yes. It's like a vine, it crawls exactly. and it creeps and it, and I don't know, when you get involved, it, you, it gets, you, you get, get bitten, hooked. you get hooked. The real designer for this band died earlier this year. Yes, and like all good masqueraders and within the mask community, we decided to rally around his wife, Gloria. Mm -hmm. And I ended up here helping her. So and that's Gloria there. That's Gloria. Kind of sort sort of taking away a little bit of the stress of the making of costumes. So Gloria, tell me how long you've been involved in Notting Hill Carnival. Since the late sixties, mm. early seventies. Um, how? Why did you get involved? Huh, well, um, when I first came to England in nineteen sixty one, I was a nurse. Yeah. Mental nurse. That's why I got involved in Carnival. You know, you're mad all the mad people. <laughs> Natural, natural way in. Absolutely. <laughs> when I came to London, I worked for a little while as a shop assistant, mm. and I met a chap by the name of Larry Ford. He eventually ended up being my partner in the last 25 years of my life, mm. of his life. Mm. And his story to me was, he came here in 51, yeah. and he was here for the coronation. Yeah. And he went, as everybody who were here, went to see the coronation. It was all so drab and military. Mm. And along came the Queen of Tonga. In her, she was a very big woman. Yeah. Huge floral dress standing in the coach, not sitting up there. Yeah. And given the crowd that sort of thing, and the crowd reacted. And immediately in his mind, he thought, you know what? They could do a kind well, of a carnival, like exactly, to give it some life and color. <laughs> Quite. So from that moment on, I think, he started working on the idea of carnival. So tell me some of the changes you've seen in the costumes since its inception. I think in the 70s when, the, when people started making costumes here, people like Lawrence Noel, um, with Vernon Williams, Rocky Byron, mm. they were all of the old school from Trinidad. So yes. they had that Trinidad effect on what they created as costumes. Once they stopped doing that effect, younger people coming in and not wanting the, yes, the, the big bent big, wire, exactly. the big ungainly mask. They wanted something a bit more um, movable more and fashion. fashion, yes. So we started looking at how we could marry couture and costume. What was the difference? Mm. And over the years, as you have seen, yeah. if you look at a couture show now, it's costume. Spectacle. Exactly. Spectacle. So, so we, we were first. Well, of course, we, of course. We were pioneers. Trinidad. The, the, there's a cause and effect. Once the local authorities stopped, people being able just to wander into Carnival. The youngsters realized that to get in there, they needed yes. to wear a t-shirt in a band or be in a band. Yeah. So it's had a good effect for us. Absolutely. In that a lot more of the youngsters are coming in. Mm. There are more people of non-color yeah. at the sounds yeah. because it's the one place that the state English can go yes. and let themselves go. go. It's the one place that they know they can go and be entertained, have good food. Mm. Mm. Yeah, well. exactly. <laughs> exactly, yes. And yes. other things that make you merry. Mary, yes. And have no fear that they're going to get arrested or harassed. So I, I believe that it is already a very multicultural thing, mm -hmm. naturally. We don't have to do it. I don't think we have to force it. Force it. It's mm -hmm. happening anyway. Mm -hmm. How would we get in? more German friends to come in and not just to play with your band, but to design a band of their own as reflective of their lives in London for the 21st century. Can you give us an idea, some suggestion? Well, probably if the, the, the powers that be will allow an extra band on the road. They okay. may have the tightening up now. So is that what's happening now? Yeah, the, 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 the numbers are getting fewer. So... We and why do you think that is? Well, like all the restrictions and things that, that are still in place. They're curbing our this, freedom. Yeah, just the usual thing. It's, 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 it has always been that sort of restricted thing and mm. I guess it will continue to be. 
I had a feeling from my conversations with Fred Taruka and Shirley McDavid that Notting Hill bureaucracy was frustrating some of its participants. Could this restrictive bureaucracy be the very thing that Tiller warned against? How could it be a true carnival if it was so highly regulated? In less than 24 hours, I would find out for myself. Carnival 2012. My first for 10 years. I wonder, what should I wear? After all the talk of Carnival, it had finally arrived. My hopes were high and I set off into Notting Hill. The vibe on the street was one of celebration and friendly banter. There was great food on every street corner and even the police seemed to be soaking up the relaxed atmosphere. Although, I'm not quite sure what this man is doing. The children's mass had already begun when I bumped into the inspirational Notting Hill councillor, Pat Mason, at the Tabernacle. Notting Hill Carnival, Sunday. Now, traditionally, Monday mass, or the day before the big mass, it's dirty mass. In Nottingham, however, the Sunday is regarded as children's mass. It's the time the kids come out to play. Now, I've got the great opportunity to speak to someone, Councillor Mason. Thank you for chatting with me. And what's your involvement in Carnival and how long? Well, I've been, a, I've been on the council since 1991. In that time that you've been a councillor, you've seen the changes. Changes for the better, for the worse? Is it dying? Is it getting better? Well, I mean, there's been there has been huge changes. I mean, the whole policing security aspect of Carnival, which what it seemed to always be about yes. back in the 80s and 90s, where it was seen as the police carnival, yes. where, where, where a lot of the trouble was caused by the police. I <laughs> the police caused the trouble. And, <laughs> and I remember back in 1987 when Westminster, Kensington, Chelsea. Mrs. Thatcher's Conservative government and the police all lined up saying the carnival must go. And all of the people underneath took that as a cue to come and harass the carnival. We have changed hugely since then. I mean, it's not the same police force. The community has effectively won the battle about the fact the carnival has a right to be here, that you should allow it to happen like the Chelsea Flower Show, yes. all the Olympics we just that's, had. That's Anyone who says it hasn't changed over 20 years as someone who stood on the front lines and took the back hits yes. on the head, I say it hurts. Yes. It's yes. changed for the better and I think it will flourish and we standing here today can't say how that will happen because the next generation will make that happen. Right. Do you think the people know that Carnival is theirs? I think that overwhelmingly they must do because although it has its detractors, overwhelmingly people support it. Yes. If that was not the case, it would collapse. Yes. The carnival is not just the Afro Caribbean community. No, now. precisely. It's and particularly, it's in India. 204 right. different nationalities right. who right. live in London, right. as we saw in the Olympic. The carnival has to go out to those communities and, do and an outreach. involve something that they want to do. I mean, the Muslim community, for example, they are fabulous at art, yes. culture, theatre. Yes, they they are. Eat. I think the people who come here to visit carnival who are not the carnivalists, I think there is a problem with them understanding where it came from. Yes. If you say the carnival is a street party, then they come and party. They get drunk yes. and they party, but they don't really understand that this came from 1958, yes. before that, yes. Roger Jones. They don't understand that. Pat confirmed that Notting Hill Carnival had a diverse local following. How could it fail to when there are 204 nations bumping and grinding together in the area? But its international reputation has also grown, and with it, a multicultural salad bowl has been tossed. A 21st century London street party has to include other communities to survive. Sam Johnson had suggested that he thought London planners should go to visit Trinidad and Tobago Carnival to see how it's done. So I put that idea to councillor and Notting Hill Carnival mediator Marion Alapini. For people to understand its history, the Carnival Committee needs to start doing that work to educate people. Wouldn't it be a good idea if people like yourself attended Carnival, say in Trinidad, Barbados, Cropover, Rio? How do you think that would be beneficial to you? 
I think that would be very enriching in terms of my personal understanding. But I think what would be fantastic from legacy for our carnival would be to invite um, participants from the carnivals that you talked about to actually come to the UK, okay. come to Notting Hill, be part of this celebration so that we learn from the best practice yes. from the best and most established carnivals from other countries. Yes. So I think that there should be that cross fertilization, not just yeah. for people like me, no. but being able to learn from what's going on, gone yes. on yes. In, in, a, in a great extent. Notting Hill Carnival was evolving. And although I understood where Soyini and Gloria were coming from regarding the preservation of the carnival's roots, I wondered how on earth Trinidad and Tobago could possibly keep a hold of the Notting Hill Carnival. I decided I needed to get into the carnival on my own, down the rabbit hole, so to speak. Who knows where I may end up? Well, a fabulous night was had by all. I ended up back at the tabernacle with some amazing drummers and a large glass of rum punch. I may have left Trinidad, but I still haven't left my Trinidad behind. Day two, and the carnival masqueraders are out on the street in full costumes and the drums are beating on the flutes. Boobs and beads. It's a wonderful sight. It fills me with a sense of pride. A beautiful, bright world of colour on a rather damp August bank holiday in London. Bumped into Mick Say, a very important man behind the scenes. He is part of the London Fire Brigade Operations and Planning Department. There must have been someone who said to you, Mick, you're going to be posted at Notting Hill Carnival. And you sort of thought, OK, what were your initial impressions when you were given this brief? I, I just see it as a, a massive party for everyone to enjoy themselves. Uh, and obviously, uh, my view is to ensure that there's public safety taken into account. Right. Uh, let, let people uh, have fun, mm. um, but in, in a measured way. Yes. Well, London uh, basically uh, manages some of the biggest events in the world. This is obviously the, the biggest um, carnival street in Europe, carnival in street Europe. carnival in Europe. And uh, again, it always works out one way or another, it's always a success. Yes. If you've got a million people in a, an event footprint, there are going to be some bad eggs here and there. Yes. Um, but obviously our, our partner agencies with the police, um, yeah. uh, they've been managing events for a number of years and, and they know how to uh, eradicate that, that kind of behaviour. Safety is a prime concern for a lot of people and as Councillor Mason had said, the emergency services were very different from years gone by. Measured fun. Hmm. I'm not sure Tiller would agree. I stopped some people on the street and asked them about their Notting Hill experiences and what do they know about the history of Notting Hill? Yeah, it's something to do with celebrating safe slavery. You're like celebrating it, letting it go and partying and free. I would say you should come because it's fun. Everyone's having fun and because it's just time to be free and party, celebrate. Yeah, an amazing atmosphere, so I'm not, not one to miss out on. Yeah. All different nations are like welcome, you just mix together and enjoy it. Um, it's um, a very big festival, with, um, um, and there's lots of ladies with pretty feathers and stuff. I would say it's really loud and noisy, and um, there's lots of pretty feathers and stuff. I 
love it here. I used to come years ago, and then I moved to Gloucestershire, so about a few years out. The opportunity arose, we had nothing to do on a Monday, and but it was carnivals on, so I had to bring the girls with me, and we come down. We've got this little store here, Jiggy Jerk Emporium, which is, uh, we're a specialist in jerking, chicken and pork, and we're so good at it, we're an emporium. Right. Coming to carnival since I was like 14, sneaking out of my house to come here, not tell my parents, and getting back by seven o'clock. <laughs> so uh, I've been coming to carnival for years and years. I just come here, get lashed with my pals, do all sorts, party all night, party all weekend, for years. Uh, carnival, when I first used to come here back in the day, carnival was very uh, sound systemy. Very, very sound system because I, you know, as you, I used to come here just for sound systems. I think Carnival started in the first place when there was a, all the immigrants came to that, the West, West, Af West, West London and England as a whole. But now, I think. Um, I don't think they know because I've only been to Carnival for the last few years and I'm just coming to help out Jiggy. And I, I don't really know that much about the history of it. I just know that it's when people get together, they party, they eat nice food. And pretty much most people are happy most of the time. <laughs> so it's just a good day out, really. There is such freedom, such fun to be had at the carnival. It reminded me of Earl's views on carnival about people presenting their best self. Such a wide and varied array of different people. But carnival manages to bring them all together. I believe that Notting Hill Carnival is not a facsimile of Trinidad and Tobago Carnival. It is its own thing and will continue to evolve with its own rituals. Maybe people don't know too much about the history of Trinidad and Tobago Carnival, but that spirit lives on. Perhaps this is about creating a whole new idiom for future generations to enjoy and to pass on. Every party needs tidying up, and Notting Hill is no exception. I would brave the aftermath and meet Christopher Scully, who runs the Tabernacle. I wanted to hear his views on the future of Notting Hill Carnival. I, I think they're doing incredibly well. I think, I think intrinsically, Carnival has a, a, a mixed focus. I think for any resident around Notting Hill, it has a love-hate relationship. Yes. I think on the global scale, being you know the largest carnival in Europe, it's a massive celebration. It's gone through its cycles, and certainly last year after the, after the riots, um, I think carnival was a great way to bring everyone back together and really give everyone a foundation. And I think it really helped everyone recover from what had been a very tough terrible, summer. Tough, exactly, very tough. Yeah. Summer. As I say, carnival in Trinidad. It draws the community together. Everybody just enjoys occupying yeah, the streets for those days. Of course, the intrinsic value of Notting Hill Carnival has to change because you've got the Sikhs, the Muslims, you've got the Filipinos. And my view is, is for it to maintain that crown of being the largest carnival in the West, in, in, in Europe, it can accommodate the people from these different communities. Oh, without doubt. I mean, I think if you look at, if you look at also carnivals, also Brazil, South America, yes. you know, it really is everywhere. Yeah. And actually Notting Hill has a, uh, has a cross-section across all the worlds. I mean, I think they did an evaluation last year where they found there was two people from every country in the world lived in Notting Hill. And actually, the Caribbean community as a demographic has been reduced for whatever reason. Yes. It's you know there's been a cycle and been a change, but the energy and the love and the character and the charisma and the vibrancy of what is Carnival, and as you say, whether or not some Trinidad and Tobago, and we're here we are celebrating 50 years of independence, now. and I think that whole value is still very much a core seed that continues to grow and continues to grow. It will become much more global, and also if. If with all the world and technology, that also can be shown, not Social just that picture, media, not just right. that title and that headline, but actually, really, what happens? The processions, the groups, the mass camps, yeah. the steel band. I mean, Panorama. I mean, on Thursday, Friday, and Thursday, they were rehearsing out here, yeah. and really, all the, the creativity and all everyone coming together. And a lot of it's just volunteering. These people Absolutely. do it because they love it and they yeah. enjoy it and they yeah. want to celebrate what. Truly Where do you is think that love comes from? Oh, I think that's I think that's handed down. I mean, I think I think I think it is so ingrained. Yes. And I think that love is also it comes across to other people. It just brings together much more than a year. It brings together almost a lifetime and generation after generation. It's, yeah. It improves year on year. Yeah. Yeah. 
Notting Hill Carnival 2012 is over. I've not been here for 10 years and the changes have been amazing. So many people have told me what they feel Notting Hill Carnival can become, what it was like, where they think. But for me personally, I think it can be so much more. Notting Hill, as I said, is home to like so many different nationalities. And as Caribbean people, we've sent out that invitation and made them feel welcome to join in our rituals and our celebrations. They too have rituals that can become a part of Notting Hill Carnival. The invitation is there. Let's see what happens. It's been a blast. I'm off to have a run now. <laughs>